My Lime. Brought to you by wonderful Florida Citrus. Florida oranges and grapefruit, fresh frozen and canned juices. All rich in natural vitamin C and packed with Florida sunshine. Now let's all play What's My Lime? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to have back with us again a wonderful actor who is just about to leave for Hollywood to play in a science fiction movie called The Fly, Mr. Vincent Price. Dorothy, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest privileges of my life is to have the opportunity of introducing the lovely, talented, and adorable Arlene Francis. I want you to come back often. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and now, the smiling publisher of Random House. And the reason he's smiling is because next week is the beginning of National Book Week. Mr. Bennett Thurf. It's nice to have you with us tonight. I certainly hope the price is right tonight. <laughs> uh, this book week that Arlene's talking about is just to reacquaint the public with the fact that there are thousands and thousands of books in all the bookstores and libraries all over the country just waiting for you to find them and find the infinite joys and learning you can get out of all of them. And through no strange coincidence, one of the people who's going to help us with this week is our own superb panel moderator, John Charles Beckham. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us in What's My Line, and I'm sure you all know Bennett Cerf, for whom the chemise has become the hair shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett decided to take on the new fashions last week. And he hasn't begun to get through the telegrams yet. <laughs> Wait till he gets to the letters. <clears throat> and he may not be able to get through some of the occupations that we've lined up for Mr. Cerf and his colleagues on the panel tonight. We will also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger in just... All right, now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Robert? Robert Briscoe, is that right? <laughs> in fact, uh, to be more correct, in panel, we know that you recognize our first guest tonight, the Honorable Robert Briscoe, former mayor of the city of Dublin, and uh, a man who... <laughs> visit with us was on uh, an occasion of a visit to the United States when you were still serving as mayor of Dublin, as the Lord Mayor of Dublin. Now, panel, <coughs> the whole purpose of this is Mr. Briscoe, needless to say, has some other activity to uh, account for his success and the affection in which Ireland holds him than being Lord Mayor of Dublin. And you are tonight to try to find out what it is that Mr. Briscoe is interested in besides politics. Now, would you come yes. over here and join me, please, sir? <laughs> Are you familiar with the way we keep score, sir? I am, yes. All right. In that event, let's let uh, the folks at home and the friends in the audience here in the theater know exactly what your other line is. <laughs> All right, panel, I will tell you that Mr. Briscoe in this context is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with... Arlene Francis. Well, Mr. Briscoe, self-employed. Is there some product in uh, what you do, Mr. Briscoe? Yes. And uh, is it a useful product? Very useful, yes. Is it found in this country? Yes. Uh, is it anything that is edible? Yes. 
Is it something that grows above the ground? <laughs> well, yes. There's a bit of it below the ground, too? No. That makes it one down and nine to go, Mr. He trapped Sir. me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Briscoe, is this uh, edible rather than drinkable? No. Uh, sorry, is it edible rather than drinkable, oh, sir? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, I thought you said... Or no, rather than drinkable. Oh, sir, yes. I mean, it's not like that. Anything to do with that wonderful Irish whiskey, you know? No. Uh, <clears throat> would you be able to buy this product, this food stuff, in a package at any time? Yes. Would it be eaten more usually at one particular meal than at all three? Yes. Would that meal be dinner? Yes. Uh, would it be served somewhere during the middle of the dinner rather than at the beginning or the end? Yes. It could be. I think, um, actually, may we have a small conference? Yes, you may, John. It could be both. It could be. It could be both. Mm -hmm. Would this be in the category of either fruits or vegetables? No. Fruits or vegetables makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then, Mr. Briscoe, would it be in the category of animal? Yes. Uh, this is an edible animal. Is it larger than a chicken? Oh, yes. Is it as large as a pig? Yes, larger. <laughs> Uh, is it a four-legged animal? Yes. And it's lo is it larger than a pig? Yes. Uh, small conference. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, Dorothy. Larger than a pig. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling you're going to get me on some definition now. Is it in the pork family? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Price. <laughs> uh, Mr. Briscoe, do uh, people ever give up this edible thing at any time of the year? I mean, do they eat it all times of the year, or is it a specialty product? It's a specialty product, it's yes. It's a specialty it's product. all the year round. Uh, it's it a is specialty a product, and it's eaten all the year round, Vincent. Oh. Looks like you get a, yes, uh, yes that's it. Yes. That makes it four down, <laughs> six to go to Well, I got no answer out maybe, of that one. Maybe Vincent meant, could you give it up for Lent? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should give it up for Lent. Uh, this, uh, this animal, does it have fur rather than hide? An edible fur goat? See, there's been no goat 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 Stand two, stand two, Mr. Serf. Mr. Not Briscoe, no, this is my chance to tell you, I hope you get elected again as Lord High Mayor. You don't like this product he's got, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look here, hair shirt, sir. Flat reel gets you nowhere. Ask some questions. Would this animal be in the cattle family? Yes. It would? Yes. Uh, then it has, uh, is it some, something that comes from the carcass of a cow? Yes. Oh, it's no, not it pork, is. for goodness sake. No, but it's fur. Fur. <laughs> fur. fur. It's not fur. Fur on a cow? Fur. All oh, cows I know wear fur. Haven't you seen Arlene's lovely cow coat? <laughs> Beautiful. Cow skin, uh, certainly. Yeah, that's unborn cow. Oh, um, no, it's <laughs> It is. It is. Oh, Let's get on with the question. Oh, um, it's born, but it's young. It is some, it does come from a cow. Yes. Well, then you uh, are obviously in the beef business of some yes. sort. Well, what the... Actually, Bennett, you are right, and you get the full credit for the identification, but there is a rather particular yes. facet here. Vincent, you look as though you might have it. It must what be you... veal if it's only a Veal? Time. Is that what you say? Yes. Well, for that, we'll give it six down and four to go. Now, you <laughs> want to take a guess on the special, better? Uh, steaks? No, seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you raise cows, Mr. Briscoe? No. Eight down and two to go. Right. We'll skip you this time, Vincent, Miss Fancy. But you know, I, I don't think I've followed everything. He's in the <laughs> beef business, you said. No, but there's a rather He's special a butcher, aspect butcher, to this maybe. participation no, in this particular business yeah. that... Uh, oh, you mean like butchering? Is it, he has an is it calves foot jelly? Calves foot no. jelly? It that makes it ten <laughs> down and no, no. Only other thing I know. No, actually, the good fun in this is that 
In Ireland, the Lord Mayor of Dublin, recent Lord Mayor of Dublin, is the manufacturer of kosher meat products. Ah. <laughs> and I, I do want to say that uh, actually, of course, uh, Mr. Briscoe's interests in Ireland are, are widespread. This is one of his activities, but we thought it was one that, and he did too, that we would all have some fun with tonight, and we did. Well, at this stage, may I present you with an Irish pipe? Oh, thank you very I much. Sir. I am that. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Um, Might I ask you a question? Certainly. The Dublin Theatre Festival just banned plays by O'Casey and Joyce, I believe. Don't you think this is indefensible? Well, first of all, you are again, as I experienced last year, accepting statements as facts, and you are asking questions on things that don't really comply with the facts. The, it, there is this theater festival for our toastal, our tourist season, and the theater festival council were considering taking on two plays, the two you mentioned. In the case of the O'Casey play, Mr. O'Casey refused to have certain technical changes made in his play, which made it impossible to put the play on within the limits of our theater, the festival director. And in the case of Joyce, it isn't actually a Joyce play at all. It's a, some kind of script which somebody has written from a Joyce play, and it was found rather not to suit the requirements because there were certain items in it which they wanted to take out and which this producer refused to allow to be taken out. So therefore, they had no alternative but to cancel any arrangements they were entering into. Now, it has nothing to do with the church or with the censorship body forbidding these plays. We are as broad-minded and as civilized and as sensible as you people are here. Well, but the world, lots of room. To what the world would like to suggest, some people would like to suggest, that we adopt these narrow measures because we are a Catholic country. I am a Jew, and I'm quite happy to live in that country and live as these things are decided. If I were this year, as I was last year, chairman of the festival council, I would also have taken the same line as was done this year. Here, here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. was a bit of a difficult one. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Mike Stoller, is that right? <coughs> and Jerry Lieber, is that right? <laughs> uh, where are you all from? New York. From New York. Fine. Well, the panel is behind you. You'll be able to see them better in a moment. Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes. Fine. In that event, let's let the people at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Stoller and Mr. Lieber are self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Vincent Price. Uh, gentlemen, um, do you deal in uh, a service or services? Yes. Yes. Uh, does your service apply to both men and women? Yes. Does what you do to men and women make them happy? Sometimes. Huh? Sometimes. 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 Well, does it ever make them unhappy? Perhaps. <laughs> it, was, it would pretty much depend on how the individual received the services that the gentleman offered. Well, do you ever, um, well, do you ever actually inflict pain on people? 
No. no. Not intentionally. Not, Not inten intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think since pain is a physical sensation, no. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you do any kind of detecting in your work? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Gentlemen, do you compose or design anything? Yes. yes. <laughs> it can't be. Uh, have you gentlemen got anything to do with ladies' fashions? No. <laughs> I'll bet it you look like the cat who just got the whole saucer full of cream. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, if you don't design ladies' fashion, do you compose music? Yes. yes. Is it rock and roll? Yes. Time? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Mike Stoller and Jerry Lieber have collaborated as songwriters for, I guess, about seven years, haven't you? That's right. Go ahead, give us the titles. Sa Hound Dog and Jailhouse Rock, and I think your big new hit is, is uh, and you must excuse me for asking the question, but uh, I have to kind of get That's this, absorb right. this from my youngsters, is Don't, isn't that right? That's right. It's Don't. But they've had a very successful career as uh, composers of rock and roll music, and it's a fad in the country. And congratulations to Is you both. Is don't the same as don't let go? No. No. Oh, no. okay. No. Just it's a little confusing, Dorothy, but don't, 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 don't you worry about it. <laughs> but actually, the effect or the, the popularity of, of the music is fascinating. Hound Dog sold something like five million records, didn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's, uh... That's no excuse. What, <laughs> what made you think of writing a song called Hound Dog? <laughs> Money. Uh, well, nothing really. <laughs> because <laughs> the, thing I, the song I like that they wrote, and Vincent, I think this is your, your best one, too. I think you'd like this one, is Black Denim Trousers and Motorcycle Boots. Yeah, <laughs> that's Vincent. <laughs> well, we don't mean, actually, you, you both won very great success, and congratulations to you. I hope you have a chance to enjoy it and to go on and perhaps do more serious things in music, which you may want to do. I don't know whether you do or not. We're planning yes, on it. Are you? Yeah, Good. Yeah. Fine. Vincent just said something that I think shouldn't escape the television public. He said, they must be so rich they can hardly talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much Perfect. for coming to see us. Mike and Jerry, will you say hello? Thank you. Good to see you. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest, but first here is a message from our alternate spot. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Are you all blindfolded, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. <laughs> you will ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin it all with Bennett Cerf. What tumultuous greeting would seem to indicate <clears throat> that you have something to do with the entertainment business. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Do you sing? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Price. Are you an imitator? <laughs> well, I mean an original imitator. No. What was that? That's two down and eight to go, Miss no. Francis. Do you perform either in pictures or television? Do you perform either in pictures or television? I do. Mr. Surf? Are you one of the stars of the bridge on the River Kwai? <laughs> no. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with an orchestra? I fired a few. What? <laughs> I didn't no, I hear that. No, I think the question here. I didn't uh, hear the, the answer. Well, uh, it, was, it was a good answer, Dorothy. What it meant to convey was well, what, that there what is What was a... it, John? Could I have the answer? Uh, well, I don't know. Wait a minute. Let me think about it. No. No. Said no. No. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Price. I don't know. Uh, do you uh, do orchestras as an act with your own voice? 
know. <laughs> I know who I'm thinking of. <laughs> Good. Five thousand five to go, Miss Fred. You are not thinking of the right thing. I do, Miss Lena. Uh, do you appear in television regularly? I do. Mr. Sir? Have you got a weekly show? Very weekly. <laughs> Hold it a minute. <laughs> I don't think I cleared up whether he has anything to do with an Ex orchestra or not. No, <laughs> wait a minute, Dorothy, before we go to the orchestra, I think it's only fair to Bennett uh, to review his question. Did, was your question specifically, do you have a weekly show? Yes. I think and we have to give very you weak. a very weak. Well, actually, it's so weak you'll get a no. That's six down and four to go, oh. Miss Kilgallen. Now, you want to go to the orchestra, Miss Kilgallen. No. Well, I'd like a clarification if it wouldn't count against me for the second time. No, actually, the question as you posed it was first answered humorously and then more specifically so that you would not be misguided. The answer was put simply as no. Oh, well, all right. I'll ask this question. Do you play or attempt to play a musical instrument? No. That makes it seven, seven. down and three to go, Mr. Mm. Price. Do you play anybody's father on television? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I hope it isn't a woman. No. No. <laughs> that makes it <laughs> eight That's down and two to go, Miss Francis. There was quite a laugh on Weekly uh, when Bennett asked that question, and you cleared it up, and the answer was no. Now, does that mean that you appear more than once a week on television? Like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the way. What does he mean? You mean That's daily? Yes, yes, Bennett. Daly, that's John. <clears throat> Would you have anything to do with the, the broadcasting of, or discussion of news? No. Nine down no. and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, <coughs> Dorothy. Arlene has a weenie. Uh, yes, Arlene, I do want a conference desperately. Uh, it might possibly be Jack Powell on the Tonight Show. Could it be on? Oh. Show? Well, he's on every night. I know. All right, I'll ask, network, a, I'll ask a suggestion for which I give the full credit to Arlene Francis. Are you Jack Parr? Yes. <laughs> well, panel, as you know, we welcome Jack back. We've had him, Vincent, he's been in your seat with us. Yes. And uh, it's nice to have him over here beside me. It's more fun over here, don't you think? Or do you think it's more fun over there? I never could play the game well, I must admit. I can't keep my mind on it. <laughs> Boy, that was great. That voice was a honey. You drove it right down into your shoes. Goggled with alum before the show. Uh, I think that we ought to say one nice word about CBS having an NBC man on our show I tonight. Do too. Because tonight well, is very we prominent. We certainly very should. They fired me. We can say that. <laughs> <laughs> they did me too. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. That was good. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy Gilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Vincent. Have good night. fun in the fly. Thank you, darling. Good night, darling. <laughs> good night, Vincent. It was lovely to have you with us. Bennett, now you've learned your lesson tonight. You <laughs> ask a question and you get an answer. Yes, right. but not such a long one. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> good night, Bennett. And Vincent, it's been very nice having you with us. Thank you. Hope we see you again soon. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line? CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. This is Hal Sims speaking.